In this video, I'm going to show you how easy it is to add and remotely view an IP security camera from the Avalonix Premium Series available from CCTV Camera World. So first, you're going to need to access your camera using a web browser. Just for the sake of demonstration purposes, I'm going to use the built-in browser that comes with your Windows computer, Microsoft Edge. So I press the Windows button on my keyboard, and then I just typed in Edge to open Microsoft Edge. You may have an icon on your desktop, or you can use the Start menu like I did. So next, you're going to need to type in the IP address for your camera. Now, typically, the label on the camera's box will be the IP address that we set it to before it was shipped whether we got that IP address from you before we shipped you the camera, or we set it to the default 192.168.1.109. Over in this instance, I've set my camera to 192.168.1.150. If you need help finding your camera on your network, we do have a config tool software, and you can use that software to find your camera. For example, if I open the config tool software by pressing my Windows key and opening the software, I can see I have a number of devices in my network. And then if I sort by IP, I can see my camera here at 192.168.1.150. And then I could conveniently click the web login button and the software will take me right to my camera. So if we set your camera to DHCP, you will have to use the config tool guide and you can search for it in our blog on our website. But I've in my camera's web interface. So now I need to use the username and password once again, that can be found on the label on the camera's box. So I'm typing that username and password in, and then I'm going to click the login button. Logging into my camera, I'm greeted with the live view from the camera. It'll take a couple seconds to load here. So now I know my camera is getting video. So in order to remotely view it, I need to go to the setting tab go into the network menu, then click the access platform sub menu. Now by default and during testing, we'll usually have enabled the P2P status for you. However, if it's not enabled, you will need to make sure that this checkbox is checked and then click the save button. Then you will also want to click the refresh button until you receive an online status. After you've confirmed that you have an online status, you'll simply need to scan this code into your smartphone. So using this QR code at the bottom, or you could also manually type in this serial number. So S slash N stands for serial number. And this is the unique access code for your camera. So now I'm going to go over on my smartphone. I already have the DMSS app installed. If you don't, you will need to use the app store, or if you're on Android, the play store. Again, it's just called DMSS. If you're opening it for the first time, you may get a couple splash screens, in which case you can skip through them. And then you don't necessarily need to make an account unless you want to bind your camera to your specific account. If you need to share it with others, it's much easier to leave it off of an account. So I'm going to tap the plus arrow at the top right hand side. And then the first option is the scan QR code option. So I'm going to tap that. It's going to pull up my camera. Now, again, if you've opened the app for the first time, it may ask for permission to use your camera which case you'll need to allow it. Now I'm going to scan the code from the web interface. And then our cameras do not have a security code, so you can tap next. Then you're going to need to choose the camera device type and then tap wired camera for a wired camera or wireless camera if you have a wireless camera or PTZ camera if you purchased a PTZ camera. Now you can give the device a name, whatever name you would like. In this case, I'm just going to name it IP Cam. Once again, you need to type in the username and password. Fortunately, the default username is already typed in, admin. Now I just need to type in the password. All right, I've typed in the password and tapped the done button. Last but not least, I need to tap save at the top right hand side. It says this device will be used under a non-account, which is fine. And then I can leave the UPnP option enabled for better performance. Last but not least, I need to tap the completed button. And within moments, my smartphone app and smartphone are able to reach out through the internet and grab my IP camera stream. 
Hopefully this video helps. Thank you for watching. If you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe.